Charlie Brown. Whoa, Brain! What's the Hi, matter, guys. Charlie Brown? My teacher assigned me a normal. Brain. Hi guys, uh, I thought we'd uh, get started with a, a cute video. Uh, what we're doing here is we're um, getting ready for the presentations. Your presentations are going to be done. Well, I'll, I'll let you know when the date is. Um, it's uh, basically uh, two weeks later. So whenever you see the video, and when it, whenever it's made available, it will be uh, two weeks after you, you know, this is um, released. So uh, if your class is on May 18th, for example, then your um, presentation uh, will be two weeks after the 18th of May, which should be April 1st. Okay, but just check the dates. Anyway, this is a cute video of Charlie Brown, uh, whose life is full of grief, and it shows how he deals with fear uh, in while giving um, a presentation in front of a, a large group. So let's just watch this and have some fun. What's the matter, Charlie Brown? My teacher assigned me an oral report. I'm terrible at oral reports, Linus. Every time I get up in front of the class, my legs shake, my hands sweat, and my stomach begins to hurt. I always end up making a fool of myself. Maybe you just need to be better prepared, Charlie Brown. A fear of public speaking is most likely rooted in unpreparedness. What are you talking about? I've had more practice at making a fool of myself than anyone I know. Okay, so the kid on the left, uh, he's, he's really smart. And he's saying that uh, if you want to do well uh, giving a presentation, then you need to be well prepared. If you're not well prepared, then the fear level increases. So Charlie Brown is well prepared, the guy on the right. He's well prepared for this presentation or speech he's going to give, but he's still nervous. Let's keep listening. I couldn't be more prepared. Good grief. I'm doomed. This is it. I'm saved. I'm saved. Yay! Shh. Step one, loosen up the body. Muscle tension will drain energy from effective speech delivery. Gee, that's easy enough to do. I feel sort of silly. I'm getting it. Step two, poor enunciation can ruin oral presentation. Practice this list of tongue twisters to limber up the tongue. Peter Picker piped a pickle, or uh, I mean, Seashell sold Sally Seashore. Okay, so now, if you didn't catch this, um, he's practicing tongue twisters to improve his enunciation, ability to enunciate. So that's something you can do, too, like Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. He tried to do that one, and he failed, so it's looking pretty grim, pretty bad for Charlie Brown. <clears throat> Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. There we go. Sally sold seashells by the seashore. This is easy. Step 3. Visualize success. See yourself delivering the perfect presentation. I can see it. I'm really visualizing. I'm visualizing. You were right, Linus. All I needed was preparation, and I prepared all weekend long at the library. This report will be a piece of cake. I'm up next. Visualize. Visualize. Here goes. Ahem. <clears throat> Sally Pickle Peter at the seashore.
So what's what's the point of the video that you just watched, uh, the video of Peanuts, that particular episode? What do you think? Well, what I think is that even with preparation, uh, getting over or getting past the fear of giving a presentation in front of a large group is a very, very difficult thing to do. However, because you won't be giving a presentation in front of a group, you're actually going to be videoing yourself, I believe, uh, unless further um, instructed. It shouldn't be so difficult because you're not going to have the, the raw, cold, real faces out there. Okay. So the way that we're going to do this uh, presentation is you're actually going to do it live. We don't do classes live normally, but I think with the presentation, it really needs to be done live to do it correctly. So that means you have to uh, make sure that you've got your Skype account, account ready. Uh, you need to include your name. Uh, this is in your Skype ID, your name and the class number. Okay, those are two very, very important things to do. Your name and the class number, whatever your class number is. Okay, so I'll name them out while I'm here, and I'll give you, uh, I'll, I'll present another document, uh, making sure that you, you do this, so just a moment. Okay, so if your class is Monday at 11 a.m., that's the intermediate class, your class number 23. So you put your name and number 23. If your class is on Tuesday, uh, that's uh, there's a nine o'clock class and it's a, the practical English conversation beginner class and the nine o'clock class is number 10 so you put your name number 10 the next class is at 11 a.m. Uh, so it's your name and class number 36 so the practical English conversation beginner class starting at 11 a.m. on Tuesday is number 36 the class that starts on the classes that start on Wednesday are intermediate. The nine o'clock class is class number 14. The 11 o'clock class is class number 23. And on Thursday, it, which is the elementary business conversation class, that's class number two. So you put your name and number two, and then we can get it all organized. Hi everyone again. I, I just want you to take a look at this uh, individual presentation rubric. This is the complete one. It has all of the details. What we're going to do in just a moment is we're going to look at a young lady by the name of Lisa Suzuki and she's going to give a speech. Uh, she does a very good job and uh, let's just listen to what she says. She really covers all of these points in this rubric. Let's see where is she now. No, that's not her. Where did she go? I checked her. Let's listen. The informative speech. In an informative speech, we give the audience a gift, a gift of information. We might give information about ourselves, about a product, about a technology, or we might give information about a city. I'd like to introduce my home. My name is Lisa Suzuki. Today, I'd like to introduce my hometown, Portland, Oregon. This information will help you decide if you want to visit Portland during your spring vacation. Okay, so she's using um, images and she also introduced herself and welcomed the audience. She actually said uh, good morning. So I don't know if we heard that part, but then she introduces herself and then she introduces the topic. And that's exactly what you're supposed to do. So let's just keep listening. I've divided the information into four parts. First, what's there to see? Second, what's there to do? Third, what's there to eat? And fourth, getting around the Portland area. Let's 
let's begin with our first point. What's there to see? There is always something interesting to see in Portland. For example, are you a basketball fan? Then on March 19th, you can see the Portland Trailblazers play the Los Angeles Lakers. Are you a music fan? Then on March 18th, you can see the Red Hot Chili Peppers concert. Next, what's there to do? Shopping. There's no sales tax in Oregon, so shopping is really cheap. Every spring, Nordstrom's department store has a great bargain sale. Best of all, you can go to Nike Town and custom design your very own athletic shoe. You'll really be fashionable when you get back to school. Next, what's there to eat? Notice how she's saying next, next, next. That's a good idea. She's sort of letting the audience know that she's moving on to a new topic. Portland has many great restaurants, but my favorite is Jake's famous crawfish restaurant. Have you ever had crawfish? Well, they're delicious. Finally, getting around the Portland area. Portland has great public transportation, but most importantly, you can rent a bike and bicycle almost everywhere. So in conclusion, visit Portland this spring. You can see an NBA basketball game, shop at Nike Town, eat crawfish and bicycle everywhere. Thank you for your attention. Notice how uh, she r reminded everybody about what she just said. That's a really good idea, too. That's kind of what you want to do in your um, conclusion. Okay, let's keep listening. Lisa did a great job in her informative speech. And you will, too, if you remember the simple speaking of speech tip. First. Give the audience specific information about time, dates, and places. For example, what can they see, when can they see it, and where can they see it. Specific information is valuable information. Second, remember to have fun in your speaking of speech, informative speech. Have a great speech. Okay. Looking at perhaps the most. Okay. Uh, so we're just going to uh, pause it for a moment. On second thought, this will be the end of the first video, the first video of uh, three or four videos for this week regarding getting you ready for the presentation, uh, your presentation, your individual presentation. Okay.